I'm in the poly tunnel and I thought I'd give you an update on what's happening. It's currently, uh, it's the last day of February when I'm recording this. It's five o'clock in the evening and it's currently 27 degrees so it feels gorgeous. A friend of mine uh, posted some pictures of her poly tunnel the other day with a lovely armchair and I thought now there's an idea. But uh, for now I just have to make do with pottering out around and working in here. It might be 27 degrees standing here, but I've been testing my soil uh, today. I bought a soil thermometer and currently the soil in the poly tunnel is still only 11 degrees. So it's still very chilly. At night times we're getting, we're getting frost still. I think next weekend there's due to be a dip in temperature. So I'm still being very cautious about what I grow from seed. Um, anything I'm growing now is with a view to either planting in here or it's going to be hardy enough that it, it doesn't mind being outside in cooler temperatures. Uh, one plant that I realised I haven't got growing yet is my tomatoes. So I'm going to look to plant a few trays of tomatoes today, this evening. Um, and also, just switch you around here so you can see what's going on. Track to come down the road. So my lettuce is coming up beautifully. Um, the spinach is coming up well. My beetroot chard is starting to appear. No movement on the leaf beet yet. The peas are coming up and half my tray of onions are up but the other half didn't come up at all. Now I did make a bit of a rookie error um, since I put up the video of starting my seed planting and that was that I didn't check my kit. So, own up, warts and all uh, podcast, video cast. Um, my heated bench wasn't actually heated for the first week and that was at the time when it was very cold. Now I had put some fleece over the plants but um, I certainly wasn't reaching the 18, 20 degrees, 22 degrees that I thought I was reaching. So that was remedied last week. So we've had the heat up out here for the last week now and it's currently operating about 22 degrees. It just really takes the edge off the sand. Another question I've been asked quite a lot, which I've admitted I think in previous videos, is about watering. So for instance, these peas, here. One thing I always suggest to people when you're starting out is when you begin growing, um, put your compost into the modules and how does it feel? What weight is it before you water it? Then water and then how does it feel then? And it, you'll notice quite a difference in the weight. Um, something else you can do is just pop your finger down there. How does that feel? Does it feel damp and cool to touch? You don't want to put so much water in that you flood the roots. One of the biggest killers of plants is overwatering, um, but you want just enough that you just keep them topped up. And really that comes with practice. So I like to just go around and lift plants and if they feel light, I, I top them up with water. And if they feel heavy, you know they've definitely got enough. Like the three bears here. Um, but really just get a feel for it. And if you're not sure, as I say, just pop the finger in. How does it feel? Does it feel damp? Does it feel wet? And you might just pop it in. So I've been looking through my tin today at what I can actually sow. And still not a huge amount of things yet. You can see my tin is bursting to go here. Um, but we, as I've mentioned before, we do live 305 metres above sea level. So I'm always slightly cautious and go a little bit later before I plant things. There's no point planting anything if I haven't got anywhere for it to go outside. And usually I'll be thinking about planting something and it's going out six weeks later. So what I plant now, 
I'll be planting out in mid-April. Um, are my beds going to be warm enough in mid-April to, to plant anything? Um, certainly won't be warm enough for any of the more tender plants like um, the courgettes or beans, French beans, but some of the hardier plants will be going out, the chard and the beetroot, the onions will be out before then hopefully. So there's really some considerations on how soon you get growing things. Likewise with my tomatoes, um, I started the peppers off and they're inside, I'll pop another video up soon and show you how they're doing. Peppers take a very long time to mature and quite often if you leave it too late before planting peppers then they won't have produced the, the pepper before the end of the season. So that's one of the reasons we start peppers so early. Tomatoes uh, don't take quite as long. So I'm quite happy today to be planting some tomatoes and then hopefully by mid-April my soil temperatures in the polytunnel will have reached 14 degrees at least, a nice temperature to get them out growing in. The other plants I'm going to be, um, or seeds I'm going to be sowing are going to be, or very soon actually, are going to be my annual annual uh, flowers that I like to grow alongside um, veg for companion planting. So I've got some tajetes, marigolds, and I also have some cosmos, I think I inherited from last year. I'm not, I own up, I'm not quite as fussy about organic seeds when it comes to flowers, so I probably should be. But um, anyway, I have cosmos, I have calendula here, I have agastache, which I'd forgotten I had bought, so I'm delighted to find these because bees absolutely love agastache. And again, these you sow from January to March, so they'll be going in very soon. Um, I have echinacea, again great for pollinators, asters and larkspur. So they're all, I think I also have an evening primrose. I've got nasturtiums are germinating in the soil now. They're the first things to come up actually from the soil disturbance. So I'm going to have a nice lot of colourful colourful flowers around the veg garden as well. In regards to the water, um, I have mentioned it before, but I usually fill up a couple of watering cans and have leave them in the polytunnel so that they are nice and warm. And then I top up this one here, which again I leave on my heated bench. And then as I'm going along, I've got warmer water to water everything. Some studies were done on tomatoes that um, when people were watering with cold water, um, it set them back almost as much as two weeks. So I always try and use water that has acclimatized to the heat and the temperature. And so the little seedlings don't get that big shock of, um, of cold water on them. Just like we don't like it really. Uh, seedlings aren't that keen either. I hope that's helped answer a few questions. Um, stay tuned and I'll be popping up a video soon about carrots and also about my tomato sowing. Thanks for watching.